Order. Before we begin, I want to welcome Ms. Sunny uh, Goggles to the hearing. Uh, Ms. Goggles serves her community in many roles. She is a, um, a member of the Northern Arapaho Tribe and the director of the White uh, Buffalo Recovery Center on the Wind River uh, Indian Reservation uh, in Wyoming. She also serves on the Tribal Committee for the National Association of Drug Court Professionals. Welcome. Uh, tribal leaders from uh, both tribes in Northern Arapaho and the Eastern Shoshone and the Wind River Inter uh, Reservation have remarked favorably on her leadership, on her strength, and on her capabilities. Those character traits were put to the test when a recent terrible tragic crime affected those very close to her and to the entire community. Our hearts and thoughts go out to you, uh, to your family, uh, and to the community, and uh, thank you for serving your community and for being with us here today. This month, we've examined many difficult topics. Today is no different. We'll receive testimony regarding the true costs of alcohol and drug abuse in Native communities. Over the past five years, this committee has held five hearings related to alcohol and drug abuse. This past March on the Wind River Indian Reservation in my home state of Wyoming, this committee held a field hearing on addressing the harmful effects of dangerous drugs. Nearly every single witness testified how the abuse of alcohol and drugs had serious and often tragic effects on Indian communities. Alcohol was noted to be a contributing factor in a significantly high number of crimes. It's also a contributing factor in too many deaths on the Wind River Reservation. According to the Indian Health Service, the average lifespan for Indians is 73 years. On the Wind River Indian Reservation, the average age at death has for years hovered around 49 years of age. These premature deaths are due primarily to alcohol and alcohol-related injuries, and I'm astonished that both the Substance Abuse and, uh, and Mental Health Services Administration and the Indian Health Service are not doing more to change that death rate. I'm also astonished that the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services uh, Administration, the agency devoted entirely to substance abuse and mental health, failed to submit its testimony on time. This has been a bipartisan concern for those of us on this committee. And the testimony that was submitted does little more than recite basic information included on the agency's website. The testimony doesn't even explain what the agency is actually doing to address alcohol and drug abuse in Indian country. Frankly, this reflects a troubling lack of seriousness and commitment to the important issues we're examining here today, and it is completely unacceptable. The many devastating impacts that drugs and alcohol have had on Indian communities warrant our heightened attention. As a physician, I'm especially troubled by the needless, preventable injuries and the deaths that often result from alcohol and drug abuse. These tragedies can take an immeasurable toll on individuals, families, and communities. So as we focus on the issues before us today, while we must examine the financial burdens associated with alcohol and substance abuse, it's important to remember that the full cost of abuse cannot be measured in dollars and cents. In 2011, the Justice Department estimated that the total cost of alcohol and drug abuse in the United States exceeded $600 billion a year. Again, this is only part of the picture. The other financial, societal, systemic, and individual costs of substance abuse are high. The National Institute on Drug Abuse states that these costs include unemployment, poor educational outcome, domestic violence, child abuse, motor vehicle accidents, and death. Substance abuse is also associated with homicide, suicide, and family breakdown. The impact of abuse is even worse in Indian country, where one in 10 deaths is alcohol-related. Compared to the general U.S. population, Native Americans in Indian country are also twice as likely to live in poverty and experience two and a half times the general rate of violent victimization. This group has a shorter life expectancy and a higher infant mortality rate than the general population. Research by the National Institute of Drug Abuse suggests that addiction to and abuse of alcohol and drugs is preventable. The testimony from the committee field hearing on addressing the harmful effects of dangerous drugs suggested that by preventing or reducing alcohol abuse, crime could be reduced as well. If that's the case, we must work together to find realistic solutions that will prevent and treat substance abuse in Indian communities. I'm interested in hearing any solutions that target culturally competent prevention or treatment uh, strategies for alcohol and drug abuse in Native communities. One thing's clear. There are not enough resources to address the high rates of abuse and addiction in Indian country. These problems need to be mitigated, not intensified. As we uh, will hear today, Native communities need to understand that if they go down the road of legalizing marijuana, it will come at a great cost. The resulting health care cost alone would be crushing and have an impact on all of Indian country. I want to welcome our witnesses and look forward to hearing from uh, each of them.